Hello everybody, Jonathan Reeves here with another Vectorwitz video. Now today we're going to look at how to make incredible vaulted ceilings using Vectorwitz using just a few simple commands to create incredible views like this. Um, we can also do some quick animations and I'll be running through how to generate sort of little walkthroughs and sort of views. So I really hope you enjoy the video. Again, it was really fun to make. I'm really enjoying making lots of videos at the moment. So if you do like these, please join the channel, join the community. Thanks. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, just start out with the rectangle tool. Um, I popped the space bar just so I could get my on-demand tools. And I think we'll go for say five meters by five meters. Uh, let's select that and move it and snap it to the center of my drawing just so I can use my push-pull tool and let's just drag off that palette wrong one sorry <laughs> let's get the 3d tools and we'll go to the push-pull shortcut for that shift R make sure you're on the very first mode and we'll just push and pull uh, by five meters just to kind of bring up a cube really now this is really just a guide um, to help us actually sort of draw directly in 3d so what I'm going to do is snap onto uh, the face, make sure that you snap onto that face and it goes purple. And do make sure that you've actually enabled the automatic plane for that to happen. You'll only get the automatic plane when you're on a 2D tool in a 3D view. So I'm just going to take those circles and rectangles and add surface to join those together. And now I'm going to get my push-pull tool, we'll do Shift-R, and basically push and pull just to kind of show you. I like using extrude, but push-pull is very popular as well. Excellent, so that's what we needed to do. Now I'm just gonna simply copy the shape. So let's go for a right-click, copy, and then paste in place. Great shortcuts for those as well, and then rotate. So we're gonna use the rotate, double-click R on my workspace again uh, to bring up the rotate by 90 degrees. Great, you can see where we're going. So all we need to do then is select our profiles. Uh, let's just see if we can kind of deselect the original shape. I oh, will do that in a minute. Let's just select those two and let's do add surface or add solids rather. So not surfaces, these are solids. So when we do that, that combines those into one big solid. Now we can click the B key, uh, hold down to get X-ray fill and delete that original cube that we didn't need that. Now, we actually made surprisingly good progress, so all we really need to do now is extract a surface, and I'm just going to use the offset tool to offset, let's say, 300 mil. We'll just offset that inside. Just reshape it slightly using the reshape tool, TD reshape, so let's just bring that down. Great, and finally I'm going to extrude that once again, so let's just do the model extrude command this time. And we know it's going away from us, so we do minus 5 meters. Um, we'll just do the same thing again, we'll go to top plan, copy, and then paste in place, great, and then rotate by 90 degrees, fantastic. So you can see if we select both of those two shapes, just delete that original plane there. Um, so let's just hold shift down and select that one. Sometimes it can be a bit fiddly to select when they're sort of on top of each other as it were. What we'll do is we'll add solids, those inner shapes, now we can go to the two shapes and do subtract solids. So we are getting some great progress. So when I subtract solids, uh, the inner sort of, you know, solid of the vault gets subtracted just to leave us that gorgeous sort of vaulted ceiling effect. Okay, brilliant. So just for this next part, what I'm gonna do is create a symbol, a bit like a component in SketchUp. We're gonna call this, uh, let's call this vault. Click okay. And now this means that um, I can use my things like my mirror tool, uh, again, M on my workspace, so mirror across, nice and easy. That looks good. Let's take those three and just mirror them again, I think. So just select those. Let's just mirror them one more time just to get a few more kind of vaults, if you like, make a slightly bigger structure here. So quick look at that, fantastic. Okay, good, so you can see how easy it is to make super complicated shapes. And um, if we did want to, by the way, we could have done those not as symbols and we could have added them all together to make them completely seamless. But the reason I wanted to make a symbol is because now I can just simply edit one of them, um, go to my textures, and here's a little sneak preview of our brand new textures pack that we're working on at the moment. It's going to be available soon on the store, so do check that out shortly. There's some really nice architectural materials in here, some gorgeous bricks and so on. So you can see, basically, um, I'm going to just put in a floor and model extrude. Let's go minus 200 maybe. Oh, 150 that will do. Okay, great. And pop up a texture panel. Let's go for some kind of nice 
stone, I think. It's really helpful just having your 3D materials at hand um, and just being able to kind of apply those just brings the model to life so rapidly. So looking fantastic already. Okay, so for this next part, we're going to have a little quick spin around. It's always good to buy at work when you're working. Going to create a new class um, for lighting. Always good to put your lighting on a separate layer and do make sure that all the layers are the same scale. Now, the reason we put the lighting on another layer is because sometimes we want it on when we're sort of you know, visualizing the model, if you like, and other times you just want to kind of completely turn it off. So by managing my layer visibilities, I can simply zap all the lighting at any time. That's a nice straightforward tip. And also you'll notice that the auto light does get turned off, so it can get a bit darker. Um, so just check out that you've got nice looking shadows. And also at this stage, I wouldn't mind just brightening the layer brightness a bit. And I'm just gonna pop on this lovely effect called ambient occlusion, just to get some nice soft shadowing um, in the kind of edges where things like meet corners, you get a slightly more realistic look already. And it's really quite fast um, with OpenGL on the graphics card doesn't seem to slow it down at all. If you do want to, you can actually set your Heliodon to be physically accurate with you know real location and times as well. Good, okay, so when you're modeling, I tend to turn the lighting off and so on. Excellent, right, so what I want to show you now was, I'm gonna go into my um, original symbol and I'm just gonna cut a bit more of an opening in here. Um, so let's just pop that in there, say 600. Let's extrude, take it up so it goes right through the arch or the vault rather. Um, and essentially all I need to do here to create this opening, I'm just gonna make it a bit bigger actually, so I can just tap in these numbers in object info, select those two, and just go to subtract solids, click okay. And now the beauty is you'll see why I made the vault into a symbol. So do remember to use symbols, A, it keeps the file size down, it renders faster, but most importantly, it makes it very easy for you to edit your model and just keep working. So I'm just gonna copy these across a bit more. Let's just mirror those across, just so we've got a really nice sort of avenue, but like a, a sort of Italian colonnade or something like that. And I think I'm just gonna put a camera in, just have a quick look at that in actual perspective mode. Oh, it looks fantastic already. So, you know, I could really imagine uh, walking through this space with the shadows on. Uh, let's have a little quick little walk through, just to kind of get a feel for that. Now I really like OpenGL in Vectorworks, it's super fast and the graphics are really kind of nice and easy to use. Okay, so we're gonna add a bit more life to the model now. Um, I've got a really nice little library here of 3D image props. Um, image props are something that are available from the libraries in Vectorworks, so if you search for those, particularly if you have the premium libraries. But what's nice is they always face the camera, um, so they auto-rotate as you move around to face the camera to look quite realistic, really. So a really, really sort of quick and cheap way, if you like, to add really lots of life to the project. Um, because unlike sort of proper 3D models of people, these are just, you know, image props. So they're super low polygon, um, very quick and easy to work with. So you'll notice that it just doesn't slow it down at all. And they look great. Um, so just adding a little bit of life, always good, just to kind of, you know, enhance your model a little bit more. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go onto our save views. Um, we're just gonna get a couple of save views because a bit later I do want to have a look at making a little animation. Um, so I'm just gonna move forward a bit. I've got my first save view position. That's like a keyframe really. Uh, I'm just gonna move forward. Let's keep, keep it pretty straightforward. We'll go straight forward into the space. Right click, create a new view. Let's call that view two. Now the beauty is I can easily go and create a little animated walkthrough. Um, before I do that though, I just want to do a tiny bit more work on my model here, and then I'll show you the animation. So what I'm going to do is set the uh, basic the shape to be in a class that I've created called Vaults. Okay, and what I'm going to do is edit the texture of that class just so I can swap out the material via the class at any time. The really nice thing about doing textures through class is you have a lot of control over the materiality, and the beauty is because I also worked in a symbol, I only need to edit one and then they all change. So it's a really great tip, using a combination of symbols and classes to edit materials. Great, okay, so we've changed the look. Let's go and create the animation. So I'm gonna go for the selection of creating a walkthrough from views, some save views. And all I do is just add those across. What that will do is actually generate a camera for me. Okay, so if I just go up and select the camera, then we can basically just play through the animation and have a little preview on screen. Um, let me just select the camera here and click play. 
It's going a bit quick at the moment, so you need to add a bit more time in. There's only one second there. So just simply uh, do that, just add in 10 seconds, slow it down a bit. When I click play, you'll see it'll be nice and smooth this time. So here's a little preview of the animation. Uh, when we in the, render the final one, it'll be slightly better quality as well and a bit smoother. You'll see that at the end. So really nice and easy to set up um, very straightforward little animations in Vectorworks. Brilliant. Okay, so I'm really just keen to show you just a couple more things here. Um, here's the camera, by the way. And let's just kind of tweak that angle. Okay, so we're just going to render this out now as a movie and you can adjust the frames per second, things like the resolution. We'll just save this one and we'll have a look at it at the end. So I really hope you have enjoyed this video. Again, it's been super fun to make. I would really encourage you just to spend time messing around with Vectorworks, just sort of freeform modeling, just to see what ideas you can come up with like I'm doing on these tutorials. I mean, it's actually enjoyable and you do learn an awful lot. Anyway, look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks for watching everybody. Bye bye.